Hello beautiful people, this is Chris from Techspert and I'm here with two great value new budget handsets, Motorola's Moto E5 and Moto E5 Plus. Going to do a quick side by side so you see how they compare for the likes of specs, performance, camera tech, all the rest of that shenanigans and see which one might be best for you. And for lots more side by side comparisons, the latest and greatest smartphones, budget or premium, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Cheers. Now, first of all, the immediate difference between them is rather apparent when you stick them side by side like so. Uh, the plus size model definitely lives up to its name. It's a six inch handset compared with the slightly dinkier 5.7 inch standard Moto E5. That just means the Moto E5 is a little bit easier to operate with one hand, although thankfully they both have a one handed mode, which you can swipe down from the center of the screen just to minimize your desktops and uh, all of your apps and everything work in this minimized effort as well. And you can drag down the notifications tab, whatever else you need to do. As I say, that is uh, available on both of these blowers. If you flip them around as well, you'll notice a difference in the design when it comes to the rear end as well. So as you can see, the standard Moto E5 has a matte finish. Uh, it's a plastic handset, exactly the same as the E5 Plus, but the E5 Plus, as you can see here, sports a more glossy finish instead, so you can see the camera and everything in there. And one disadvantage of that glossy finish is the fact that it does pick up scuffs, uh, fingerprints, grease marks, things like that rather easily. But it does also have a rather neat wave effect when it catches the light just so, which looks rather neat. In comparison, Model E5, it doesn't smudge up, but it does look a little bit dull, to be perfectly honest, in comparison to the E5 Plus. So I think I prefer the plus size model for the general finish of it. Both phones, as you can see here, sport a old school USB 2.0 for charging down below. Uh, but you do get a nice bit 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in both cases as well for attaching your wired phones. And neither phone is sadly water resistant, although apparently the Plus model is water repellent in some markets, just not here in the UK. You'll also notice that both phones, of course, support a rear mounted fingerprint sensor with a nice bit of neat Motorola logo ingrained in there as well, which is a pretty neat effect. And in both cases, pleasingly responsive as well. I'll give them a simultaneous tap right now. And as you can see, more or less stranger desktops are about sort of a half second delay or so, unfortunately, but then what do you expect? from a budget blow and at least because the uh, fingerprint sensor is slightly indented in both cases it's nice and easy to find with your finger when uh, you're fumbling around in the dark or whatever else. Who doesn't like a good fumble around in the dark, right? Now both of these blows are on a nice bit of Android Oreo, in this case 8.0.0. And because it's a vanilla version of Android, you can expect basically the same set of features and everything on both of them. And you can also expect timely updates to the latest version of Android and uh, the latest security updates and everything as well, no matter which one you choose. And on top of that vanilla version of Android, you also get the Moto app, which I've just tucked away up here. And what this does is just adds some bonus features on top of the standard Android stuff. So for instance, in both cases, you get some helpful suggestions on how to get the most out of your smartphone, which pop up uh, the more you use the handset and then if you dive into the features section you can see in there you also get some moto actions which is basically some simple gesture support such as for instance the swipe to shrink screen which we've already demonstrated you can also take a screenshot by swiping with uh, three fingers pick up the phone to stop it ringing flip it over to shut it the hell up and you can also play with some display configurations as well, such as the attentive display, which just keeps the display on when it detects that you're staring at it, and the night display, which just filters blue light for a more comfortable, easy on the eye experience. So in both cases, as you can see, basically identical feature sets. What about those displays? Well, slightly bigger display, as I mentioned before, in the E5 Plus is a six inch compared with a 5.7 inch E5, but in both cases, an IPS panel. Uh, so nice, quite punchy colors, especially for a budget handset, definitely impressive stuff. Both reasonably bright as well. I've knocked off the uh, automatic brightness, and as you can see, if we uh, take them both up to that maximum level, uh, I had absolutely no problem using these both outdoors just a moment ago. Even when wearing sunglasses, I could still find I could like read emails and things like that, uh, which is definitely great, again, for the budget price. Just boost those back down again so I don't see everyone's eyeballs. Both the Moto E5 and the E5 Plus sport an 18 by 9 stretched aspect ratio, so that makes them perfect for the likes of Netflix, it means you get very little letterboxing on the go. So as you can see here from this nice sideways bit of anime, you get a nice uh, full screen image, and it's nice and sharp and quite punchy colours as well. In both cases, HD Plus as well, so 1440 by 720 so technically the Moto E5 ever so slightly sharper because it is a slightly more compact display, but stick them side by side, you'll struggle to notice any difference in terms of clarity. Now, running the show on the Moto E5 and the E5 Plus, you get a Snapdragon 425 chipset. You do actually get a choice of between either two or three gigs of RAM 
here on the Moto E5 Plus in the UK, whereas on the Moto E5 it's just two gigs. So far, touch with the performance has been okay. It's definitely been manageable on both handsets. I've seen a few little stutters here and there when I'm trying to load up an email. Uh, if I'm trying to load up a website, sometimes that struggles a little bit and uh, flipping between apps, things like that. But on the whole, the performance has been okay. Certainly manageable if you just want to do everyday stuff such as, I'll say, checking messages, things like that. If you're a bit of a fan of benchmarking, you'll see that good old Geekbench 4 here, as you can see, turns out basically the same score for both handsets, which is to be perfectly expected. And it's the same story for Antutu as well, no difference between the two. What about the storage? Well, in both cases, you get 16 gigabytes of storage and about six gigabytes of that is used up by the OS and the various pre-installed apps. You only get about 10 gigs to play with for your media and apps, but thankfully you can expand the storage in both cases up to 128 gigabytes via micro SD here on the E5 and via about 256 gigs uh, via micro SD here on the E5 Plus. And the E5 Plus, if you do opt for that three gigabyte of memory model, you do get more storage as well, 32 gigs. So at least you've got that option if needed. Will cost you a little bit more though. As for the battery life, I've only had these phones for a very short time, but certainly the E5 Plus seems to be the way to go if you spend a lot of time out of the home, away from plug sockets, you can't charge it up very often. It's got a mighty 5,000 milliamp cell compared with the still pretty damn good 4,000 milliamp cell here on the standard Moto E5. And of course you've got your usual battery saver modes, you've got options to monitor which apps are sucking up juice and uh, you can deactivate them, stuff like that. So lots of stuff to keep you going for at least a full day, generally over that unless you're like full on gaming or Skyping non-stop. Speaking of gaming, I've played the likes of PUBG Mobile on both of these as well and it runs but on low detail levels and not very well to be perfectly honest with you. So if you are looking for a gaming device, I'd recommend upping your budget for something like the G6 G6 Plus instead. Which brings me neatly onto the camera tech and in both cases you get a single lens snapper. Here on the standard Moto E5 it's a 13 megapixel with an f2.0 aperture lens and phase detection autofocus to lock onto your subject. Here on the E5 Plus it's actually a slight step down in terms of the megapixel count, it's a 12 megapixel, it's again an f2.0 aperture lens and uh, but you do get phase detection autofocus bolstered by a bit of laser autofocus as well so it works a little bit better in those low light conditions. If we dive on into the camera app, they both basically use exactly the same layout. As you can see here, just a quick swipe to get to your video. Both phones can shoot video at full HD resolution at 30 frames per second. Uh, flick back to get back into your photo mode and a flick this way to get into the bonus features which are very limited in both cases. Panorama and slow motion is basically your whack. As you can see, both have uh, built-in HDR support, they've got the usual LED flash timer, and they've both got support for a manual mode as well, which just allows you to tweak the configuration before you take a shot. So you can tweak, for instance, the likes of the white balance, get it just the way you like to suit the ambiance, and then uh, shoot away and you'll get very precise results. However, in both cases, the auto mode is generally quite dependable. It is obviously quite a basic snapper, in either of these cases because they are quite budget models, but you'll do the job absolutely fine if it's just your everyday shots that you want, snaps of the kids, uh, things that you see that look pretty, whatever you want to shoot basically. And in both cases, the image stabilization on that full HD footage is not great. So you want to stand as still as possible when you are shooting a home movie. As for those front facing cameras, you get a five megapixel F2.2 snapper here on the standard Moto E5, and that's been upgraded to an 8 megapixel f2.2 here on the E5 Plus. Both have a built-in flash as well, so you can take shots in the dark if you don't mind looking a wee bit startled. And of course, a nice bit of beauty mode action, which doesn't really seem to do much for me. I don't think that's because I'm so stunning, it can't actually physically make me any more beautiful. I think they're just not very good. And that, in a nutshell, is the Moto E5 versus the Moto E5 Plus. So as you can see, there are a few little differences there, not just in terms of the size. The E5 Plus may be a little bit more difficult to handle, but it does sport a slightly sexier back. You also get that laser autofocus camera, which seems to make a difference in those low light conditions. And of course, the bigger battery as well at 5,000 milliamps. Besides that, there's not a massive amount of difference between the E5 and the E5 Plus. I personally prefer the fact that the E5 is that little bit dinkier, easier to handle, although they do both have that one-handed mode when you can eventually get it to work. So £120 here in the UK, standard E5, and the Moto E5 Plus a little bit more expensive at £150, so not a massive gulf between them in terms of price. Which one do you think you would go for? Let us know in the comments down below, always interested to hear your thoughts, and don't forget to give us a subscribe for more on these two handsets, and for lots more comparisons of the latest and greatest mobiles. Thanks for watching everyone, love you, bye!